Uh, hello friends, it's me, Wayman29, and uh, I thought I would come on and do a video. might get rather long-winded. Um, I found the story of Job by Whistlin' Phil. Um, he came on and was discussing uh, the ideas of the text of Job, and um, this is a text that always fascinated me, and um, I find it interesting on some of the points uh, he makes. However, I'm afraid um, that the points he makes are no longer valid in today's day and age. And uh, I'll get to what I'm talking about and try to explain better. This is in no way out of um, um, retaliation or any um, uh, any kind of um, mean-spirited video against um, Whistling Phil. Uh, hopefully this will be just another way of, of looking at the text. Hopefully it's not the right way. It's just from another angle. First of all, um, the text does not say that uh, if you stick with God you get everything back. Some scholars believe that the first and last chapter of Job were added later after the main text was written and I'll get to that later in real life you don't get everything back because the text of Job mainly is trying to discuss a theory of suffering uh, what is just suffering and unjust suffering and um, it's trying to deal with one side of a multi-sided issue and there are many um, ideas presented on the topic of suffering and how to deal with suffering. Job just happens to be one of them and it's referred to because it's the most dramatic and possibly most beautifully written because in here you have a speech written by Yahweh who doesn't even really address the answer to the problem of suffering in his uh, rather long speech in the text of Job. So we're gonna um, get a little background. We're gonna um, compare this a little bit to ancient Near Eastern uh, religion and Eastern religion and we're gonna kinda see the culture that these ideas were born out of and then we're gonna look at some of the uh, theories or a theory that I happen to like uh, presented on the text of Job. So getting into a little bit of the background. Um, some scholars believe that this text was written during the Babylonian exile. So here you have a displaced people. The top possibly 20 percent of the Jewish population were uh, relocated um, during the Babylonian exile. These were the writers, uh, administrators, government officials, um, uh, priests, and uh, uh, educated people. So they were removed from their homeland. Uh, the, the temple was destroyed completely. And um, so you can see here, uh, as if you look at the text, Job representing Israel. And it uh, brings to light a lot of the questions that the those of the exile would have. Because they did in fact lose everything. This is after a period of um, where Israel had a king and you had the prophet Isaiah telling them that if they just followed God's way and trusting God um, they would be delivered by some miracle and it didn't happen then they were crushed by the Babylonians so you have that idea uh, looking at it from that angle it explains a lot uh, on how the text would be viewed um, Job's friends. Um, Job's friends coming down saying to him, oh, maybe you've sinned against God. You know, you had to do something because God does not do anything unjustly. These are prophets who were prophesying against Israel in their misery. Prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, who said that it was because of the sins of the nation of Israel that this bad thing happened. However, 
when you look at it, um, Job uh, brilliantly says in the uh, first chapter, I believe it is, um, you know, naked I came in to the world, naked I leave. So at that, uh, you have kind of the idea of like the yogis in the uh, the Upanishads and uh, late Vedas, early Upanishads, leaving and renouncing society, saying, it's not about all this stuff. It's about my inner self, and maybe, just maybe, it's about being a little bit better than the ways of the gods. And I'll explain what I mean. Now, when Satan goes before Yahweh, um, the Satan um, doesn't appear until there's texts from uh, during the exile and after the exile. And he's called the Satan. He did not work against God, but he was kind of a um, person who um, was kind of like a, oh, what do you call him? He's, he's not a messenger, but he'd be like the kind of guy that would make sure that what you said about Yahweh was true. So he's kind of like a spy, maybe. And so his name is the Satan, or the accuser. And so he goes before Yahweh and makes this bid and says, well, maybe Job is just with you, Yahweh, because he has all the stuff. And, um, you know, Yahweh does, does the bid, and so all these terrible calamities happen to Job. And, um, however, in reality, bad things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to good people. And the friends of Job who came to comfort him, the, the priests and the um, prophets who went with the exiles to be with them, um, you know, provided very little comfort uh, to the exiles that were there because it was always on their minds that it was something they did when they were questioning the acts of the Heavenly Council and the Satan and, and Yahweh. So it's an interesting uh, view because you have priests telling the exiles after they've lost everything that it had to be something they did. And there's allusions to this in some of the texts where um, especially um, I believe that um, in verse 8 you have Bildad the Shuhite uh, uh, bring up something. If your children sinned against him, he delivered them into the power of their transgression. Um, this comes in the question uh, issue is addressed in Ezekiel 18, where Ezekiel is talking about this, um, you know, each man paying for his own sin, and about um, the saying about teeth being set on edge, and how um, each person is um, picked to pay for their own transgressions. So you see a little bit of Ezekiel ideas in this. And um, just as one example. And um, so as these continue, so you might say, well, well, who, who would the wife be that would say to Job, you know, just curse God and die? These were the, the people who bowed to the assimilation process, uh, seen the wealth of Babylon, got good... Um, got good positions in the Babylonian government and when um, the King Darius came and, and took over the, they were the ones who felt maybe they shouldn't return um, these were you don't want to call them traitors they're probably just looking after their own skins however these were the people who ended up uh, being assimilated they were saying to the to the exiles look you know Yahweh he wasn't everything Isaiah said. He wasn't everything Ezekiel said or Jeremiah said. These bad calamities happened to us because just before this, we had a temple and, and things were going rather well. And we had law codes and we were following them to, to, to the best of our ability. And then things happen. So, you know, you should curse God and just die. And dying meaning assimilate into the Babylonian uh, religion. So, uh, after 70 years, they do return, but it was never the same. It wasn't the same um, Temple of Solomon 
and um, it wasn't the same um, holy of holies and, and those kinds of ideas and and they had to rebuild from from rubble so they had to start over and they were not they definitely were not given everything back as Job was given everything back so just to look at it in a modern day perspective in reality um, the way that the modern viewer sees it and the way that the evangelicals see it um, is not at all reality um, some of the some of the uh, literature of the ancient Near East that addressed the same situation one example would be the hymn of lamentation to the goddess Ishtar um, you can look that up it's a brilliant text and it follows the text of Job um, lobbying against the deity all the um, all the things that uh, he felt was unjust and um, here in the text of Job Job wants to put Yahweh on trial before the Heavenly Council but knows that even if God shows up he will still lose so he knows he he does not have a chance because who is Job and Yahweh is is much greater and he he doesn't even have a fighting chance so that's not even that's not even a possibility to put Yahweh on trial and Job asks why the why the scales are tipped you know against him when when he seemed just which would exactly be the questions that the most pious um, Israelis would be asking as they're being exiled and and seeing their temple destroyed and um, so those are some thoughts um, also um, some ideas about that uh, you have um, uh, realization that um, what I said earlier about being better than the gods here you have the gods making all kinds of deals same thing happened in Greek, Greek culture where Zeus and the gods um, seemed to be a little bit immoral the gods couldn't be couldn't be trusted um, uh, promises weren't dealt out properly and the gods were just as wicked as seemingly as wicked as the humans so there came to be this this uh, drive towards the self and the inner righteousness and to even transcend the uh, issues that even the gods themselves faced so I believe that here you have the same question being asked and um, if if the Satan and and Yahweh um, are, are, are doing these types of things in, in the in the mythology and in the motifs then um, Job himself Job himself needs to be a little bit better about himself and the deity to to overcome his misery which he knows he will suffer and in real life suffering happens to everybody it rains on both the just and the unjust so to have somebody say oh you know follow God and you won't suffer um, is wrong I know plenty of people that have uh, Christians that have died of cancer so and all types of horrible diseases that normal people die of so uh, it does not in any way it tries to it attempts to answer the question of suffering however it's not fully complete and I don't even believe that this story was written to be fully complete so also you might want to look at uh, questions being raised in um, the conversation between Arjuna and Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita there's some really interesting exchanges there and also if you get a chance check out some of the Upanishads because they deal uh, with suffering and uh, such issues also so uh, take care youtubers uh, take care of yourself and each other